an LED sign. Let me just turn it on. I'll pull the wee chain at the bottom. Ooh, bright. So it's got, uh, well, fixed uh, static letters and the little animated swoosh that you normally see uh, in these things. And I saw this in an Asian shop and it was only £20. So I thought, let's buy it because I want to see what's... Uh, first thing, I wanted to see if this is one big circuit board and looking closely at it, it's very odd texture. It's very rough. I'm not really sure about this. Also, um, I'll turn this back off again. I'll just unplug it. I was expecting it to have a 12 volt power supply and instead it's got a mains lead going directly in, a completely non-compliant mains lead because this is a square pin plug and these are supposed to have fuses in them. Um, in the UK we have 32 amp, 240 volt uh, supply to the socket so each each plug is supposed to have a fuse in it. This one doesn't so that's, that's not a good start. So let's uh, open this up shall we because it does say open after all. Right. Oh, lots of screws. I'm guessing maybe there's a little uh, switch mode 12 volt supply inside. Because the way it's animated, I would expect that's how they do it. Uh, they could use a capacitive dropper, but that would make the animation a bit more difficult. Um, lots of screws. How many screws are there? Eight, ten, twelve screws. That's quite annoying in a way. I mean, you could say, hey, it's really well made, but. Hmm. Oh, gee, it feels like I'm not getting to the end of these screws. Oh, four more. To reveal what's inside, whether I'm right, if it's the low voltage uh, power supply or a capacitive dropper with some other arrangement for the animation. the last screw out. Just lever this up. Are you ready? What's inside? Oh. Right. Um, it appears to be what we in the UK call hardboard, just thin wood with holes drilled for the LEDs and the LEDs just poke, the leads poke through. So a, so a three millimetre holes drilled. Uh, are the LEDs glued in? No, they're loose. So all that holds those LEDs in is the fact they're just poked through this wood, which is, that explains the rough texture, because it is just wood. Um, and they're poked through, and the LED leads are folded back and soldered. That's all that holds it in. The power supply... Oh, I'm, I'm already seeing that a lot of these LEDs are in huge series strings. The power supply looks like a capacitive dropper. There's not a switch mode here. And the animation circuitry is a 4017 and a 555. That's very old fashioned. 555 clock generator, um, general sort of clock chip, and a 4017 is what they call, is it a Johnson counter? It, it's a one of 10 counter. You can set it to count sequentially along 10 outputs or by Taking one of the outputs back to the reset pin, you can reduce the number. I only see two transistors. I thought there was a three animation of... Oh, there's a transistor tacked across the back with extra components. Right. But there's only one capacitive dropper for the whole thing. Which is obviously doing the static LEDs as well. So there's the output. There's the positive output going... It's looping to all the LEDs by the look of it. Uh, one end's going to these resistors that are doing the series circuit for the swoosh. The series circuit chases along to here and then continues along to here. And then there's three wires here that go to the transistors. I'm guessing they're transistors, yeah. Uh. Yeah, there's capacitor, so it's DC, so they must just be using transistors. Let's uh, get the little microscope onto that, because uh, my eyesight is just not what it used to be. 2N5551. Okay, I'm guessing those are probably 
just standard NPN transistors? Yes, they are. OK, that's reasonable enough. So that's how the animation is done. How are the, the, there's something a bit odd about this. Um, the positive, that's the animation. The positive goes along to here, and it actually connects to both these two letters. And that runs round in a series circuit round that letter, the O, and then it jumps to the E, runs round the E, goes through a resistor, and then back to the negative. The negative is also looped across to the N, which is also uh, all wired in series, and then jumps across to the P. So the open, the O and the E and the P and the N are in, they're series strings, but they're um, two sets wired in parallel. Uh, probably, I'm guessing they just match the number of LEDs and the resistor then sort of uh, limits the, the current to, um, so the, um, you can run them both in parallel like that. <coughs> um, this is cheap and tacky, but I suppose, you know, ultimately it works. The fact all the circuit boards are just taped down with sticky tape is a bit tacky, but that's all right. Yeah, it works. So, going to the animation board, we've got the capacitive dropper with a series resistor to limit the inrush current and the discharge resistor, which is nice, the four diodes to the, for the bridge. Um, the output of that goes straight to the, o, the OPEN. So how many LEDs are on there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, about 40. Say about 40 LEDs, uh, roughly 20 LEDs per character. So that's 40 LEDs, giving about 80 volts plus the slight difference in the resistor. So that will kind of cap the voltage out of this. So then it goes through this resistor here, um, and there's a zener to clamp the voltage, and the capacitor across that to create the basic power supply. Then the... <coughs> timing, th that looks like a, is that a timing capacitor or not? I'm not really sure actually. I think this is a timing capacitor on the 555. And then it doesn't really need um, a resistor there to the 4017, it could just be tied straight across. But that's what they've done. The This circuit board was clearly designed to just toggle between two outputs. I'm not sure why they did it this way. And then they converted it to a three-way um, with a 10K resistor from the output of the, um, the 4017 to the gate of the, the base, should I say, of the transistor. And they've cut a track in the back here and then podged with a wee bit of blue wire across the back there so that it's uh, not a two-channel toggle back, backwards and forwards anymore. It's, it's gone to three-channel. Yeah, you thought they'd maybe have made a little um, <coughs> allowed for that in the circuit board if they thought they were going to use more channels, but it's obvious that they just thought it was going to be two channel. Yeah, that's very odd. <sighs> I don't know what to say about this. I mean, it works, and I suppose that's all that really matters. The it, if it's, got, it's a proper fuse put in, I'm not. I'm not really sure. If this got wet. The, it would cause probably tracking issues along the wood itself. Could give even you could even possibly get a shock off the front, I suppose. But other than that, I don't know if I can really fault this. I, ca I kind of like this approach of mounting the LEDs through like that because from the front it looks okay, and it's cheap and easy. That seems a good way of making cheap big signs. But I think I'd actually <laughs> rather than use a main supply. The temptation would just be to use low voltage for safety. Although having said that. Then again, there is a temptation that, you know, you could put a lot of LEDs in series. Um, thinking that there's four, uh, 40 LEDs in each pair of letters, um, and the red LEDs, so that's about 80 volts across them. You could actually have, on the R240 volt supply, you could have run the whole lot in the series, but maybe they didn't do it that way because it's designed for dual voltage. Um, they can maybe just... Uh, use the same sign arrangement on 110 volt um, as well as 240 volt. Yep, you know what, it was, it's quite interesting. It's, uh, it's, 
educational. It's a bit tacky inside, but other than that, it, I suppose it works. So, hey, you know, it's reasonable enough. <laughs>